normal iron levels may not be normal when it comes to restless leg syndrome. So what are the iron levels you should have if you have restless legs? I'm Dr. Andy Burkowski of Relax Health. So let's talk about iron levels. Your doctor should be checking your iron levels every six to 12 months for pretty much everyone with significant restless legs syndrome. If you are on an iron supplement or you've had really low iron levels or been getting iron infusions, you really should have those levels checked every three months. Low iron levels in the brain or poor metabolism of iron is thought to be the main cause of restless leg syndrome. This is what we know from all the research that's been done, particularly in the last 20 to 25 years. So iron is really the key to restless leg syndrome. In terms of getting these lab tests done, there are really two tests that you want. One is called the ferritin level, and the other one is the iron divided by the total iron binding capacity, also called the transferrin saturation or the iron saturation. This is sort of like how much storage space you have in the bank and how many deposits of, of iron you have uh, taking up the space in the bank. And these should really be checked first thing in the morning while fasting at least 12 hours on an empty stomach. If you are on a supplement, uh, you should hold your supplement for at least two days because that second test, the transparent saturation, could be thrown off by iron through food or through a supplement. Both of these tests can be falsely elevated for various reasons, so you, you really want to take the lower of the two numbers. So in general, the consensus seems to be for restless leg syndrome that a ferritin level of 50 to 75 uh, would be the cutoff for trying oral iron supplementation because at higher levels of ferritin, your body may not absorb an oral supplement, though you might still benefit from levels above 50 to 75, but that must be done through an IV infusion uh, of iron. The, uh, if the ferritin level is, is below 50, probably a full dose of iron, something like 50 milligrams of elemental iron would be indicated. And then from maybe 50 to 75, a lower dose, like 15 to 25 milligrams per day of iron would be supplemented. Once you're between a ferritin of 75 to 150, then the only way to get the iron levels up may be through an infusion of iron. The second number, the transferrin saturation, should at least be 20%. So if the ferritin is falsely high, but the transferrin saturation is below 20%, that's indication of, of an iron deficiency, and that must be supplemented as well. Do not go by the reference ranges that the lab gives you. Some labs have a ferritin of 12 as normal. A ferritin of 12 is anemic. That's an extremely low level of iron, but that actually, that number reflects the population of the patients who are in that area where the lab is getting the numbers from. Just because a lot of members of the population have low iron doesn't mean it's normal. Iron is, is really a spectrum of low to high, and iron deficiency anemia is often defined as a ferritin of 30 or 40. But even for restless leg syndrome, if you can get your iron levels, particularly the ferritin above 100, that's ideal. So those of you with a ferritin of 50 and 60, you might still benefit from a low dose supplement and that might further improve symptoms of restless leg syndrome. So before you move to any type of treatment for restless leg syndrome that involves medications, make sure that your iron levels have been checked and they're at the correct level. And as always, uh, this YouTube video is for informational purposes only. It does not constitute the practice of medicine. Any decisions related to your health, including restless legs and iron, should be done under the supervision of a medical professional. And as I always say, or, or usually remember to say, one of the keys to sleeping well is to relax.